Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video we're going to get started installing and doing a bit of basic configuration on Foz User Bundle or Friends of Symphony User Bundle. So Foz User Bundle is perhaps the standard way of managing users inside a Symphony application and the reason I'm sort of going at like warp speed through the installation process is it is pretty much just copy and paste from the manual. There's seven different steps that you've got to do. Uh, some of them you don't need to do specifically, such as the enabling translations if you're not interested in that sort of thing. But pretty much it's just copy and paste. The most complicated thing I, I think is getting your head firstly around the security setup. Uh, and one thing to be aware of there is just to make sure that you do copy in your dev routes back into your firewall. Um, but also setting up the user entity can be a little bit confusing. Uh, don't worry too much about that error there. The reason you're seeing that is because um, when I did the like the update, it was um, in a in a bad state. But as you can see, when we do the cache clear there, uh, it's all fine. It's there's there's no problems. This is I've also gone ahead and set up a database because we're going to need to persist our users. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and just create our first user. So in this case, it's just going to be my uh, user credentials. And you can see now that that user has been persisted off to the database. Uh, and it does actually enable the user to begin with if you create it from the command line. There's some other commands that we can do here, as you can see. Um, these are all pretty self-explanatory, but the perhaps the, the more interesting two are promote and demote. And it's not something that you might think of as being immediately usable. But if we jump across back to our code, we can see that we have a file called security.yaml. And in there, we've got the role hierarchy. So this is this came as part of the Foz user bundle config that we've just copied and pasted in. Uh, and in there, we've got three different roles that, set, that are set up. Um, and by default, you're going to get the role user whenever you're successfully logged in. So what this is saying is, if you're the role user, that's absolutely fine. But if you're the role admin, you are also going to be a role user. So it's just like inheriting things so that you're not having to keep specifying things over and over. So each user doesn't have to be role user, uh, comma, role admin, that sort of thing. So role super admin effectively gets all the privileges of any, anything configured for role admin. And role admin is going to get anything that's configured for role user. Now, you can also do uh, like arrays here. So we could have an array um, of roles that super admin would inherit from. And I guess the most common pair are role um, admin and role allowed to switch. Uh, a role allowed to switch means effectively that if we're logged in as, say, user Bob, and Bob's a, a super admin that's got this role allowed to switch, and then we have another user, say, called Ted. And Ted's got a problem that we can't really figure out too easily. It's only really affecting Ted. And we want to be able to jump onto Ted's profile, but we don't want to change his password to be able to do so. So role allowed to switch is going to allow us to switch to that user, to Ted, from our logged in user of Bob um, without having to know their password. And we can just do that through the URL. And this role allowed to switch is what stops just any old user from being able to just stick in this little parameter onto the URL and being able to swap to a completely different user. And we can make this a little bit more sophisticated because what you might have is say a call center that want to be able to, like it might be the technical help desk or whatever that, that might want to jump on um, and be able to switch to just general users, but you don't want them to be able to switch to, say, a super admin's profile and then do sort of mischievous things, I suppose. Um, so we can restrict that down quite a lot further. We'll come to that later in this series, but there's quite a lot of different um, available options to us. So, I, and anyway, one other thing about roles is the we can create the names of these roles. We could just add in anything that we like, like we could just have role uh, fisherman or whatever, and that could be uh, also inheriting role user. So anything like role super admin may also get role fisherman or, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, that's come out completely wrong. But if we just pop that in like that, we these roles are just completely arbitrary. We can call them whatever we like, do whatever we want with them. So don't be confused if, you know, you do see these ones quite frequently, obviously not role fishermen, that's just utter nonsense, but you do see the same ones coming up frequently. And I, I gotta say, when I first started with Symphony, I found the whole concept of roles like quite difficult to uh, find documentation on, honestly, but yeah, there we go.
But why all this talk of roles? Well, basically that's what this promote and demote command is going to do for us. See, we can't just go into the database and add these things in, not easily anyway, because the serialized arrays, uh, and I'll show you what I mean by that in one sec when we've added ourselves a role. So there's a couple of different ways that we can do this, and it's all described in the documentation, but I just want to show you so that it's something that you will remember because it's quite important and especially when you, you're like starting out and testing um, it's it can be pretty useful to know about these shortcuts so what we can do is just give ourselves the role of role admin uh, and it's going to go off and, and add that as you can see now as I say it's it's actually stored in a serialized format so being able to go in and edit that directly is not that easy because you've got to like count up the length of the string and all that that's you know it's a pretty standard uh, thing that you'll see in PHP um, a serialized array like that like I say it's not that easy to to sort of deal with I suppose and we can also do the opposite so we can demote as well and that just removes that role for us so again we refresh and it's gone back to roles of none or we can just do something a little bit quicker we can say foz user promote code review dash dash super and now it's a super admin so again we have a look got the role of super admin that's cool and again just to remove that we can just do the the same again just demote so pretty handy and um, primarily when you're testing but it is also pretty useful to maybe just add that role um, allowed to switch when perhaps you're just doing, you don't want to add that role on, on your user at all times. And it's a it's a bit of a contrived example, I suppose. You would just generally tend to have that role on maybe the super admins or, or some subset of um, your admin staff. But that's basically a, a very quick guide to getting set up with Foz User Bundle and having a user configured.